Alright, let's get to work and open up our fabulous blister pack containing our pair of heroes. First, we'll toss Carlotta and her potato face right out in the trash where she belongs. And then we can get to work on the real star of the show. Firstly, we'll use our Bead Buddy Clippers and a number 7 art shiv to carve away any sprueing and flash, taking our time and being real careful to not nick our fingies or cause any excessive damage to the model. From here, we'll first get out our microfile to rasp away any remaining mold lines, again being careful in what we remove. Now we'll prep the base, first getting out our honking hefty bowie knife. This 50 cal art shiv is actually great unironically for punching out the mounting point on the base. It's weight and edge working real well to bust on through that film that seals our slot. Now with that done, we can get to painting. First putting away our stabby stick into its holster. Okay, let's go ahead and first introduce today's guest palette, Mew. Mew here is going to help us by holding on to various viscous and sticky liquids that'll tack together bits and bobs for this model. This first batch of sticky fluids is just some extra thick MaxiCure super glue, which will seal our kitty cat onto the base as well as stick its various components together firmly with a bit of help with some BSI InstaSet. With our little pizza kitty based up, it's time to prime so we're on off over in the bullshit corner once again ready to spray white liquid all over this pussycat. First, we need to fill up the cup with our milky liquid, ready to then shoot off all over this model. Multiple passes built up with patience will lead to a satisfying finish on our sticky buddy, allowing the first paint coats to adhere well on a molecular level as well as serving for the preliminary coloration over which we can spread our speed paint goodness. Now it's time to paint, but first we're going to rehydrate our wet palette and then put the first new sheet of parchment paper from this pack onto the now moistened surface. With this wet ass palette properly soaked, we can move on to our first paint of the evening, Citadel Contrast Warp Lightning. We'll use this thick and staining wash to tint the surface of the model a pleasant, saturated deep green with palpable and appreciable differences between the superficial coloring and the shaded crevices. This will make for a fantastic foundation for the later steps and make up the majority of the model's tone. With the green done, we'll move on to our first secondary tone in the form of Fire Giant Orange from the Army Painter Speed Paint 1.0 line. Even though this color is a secondary color just like the green tone, they're far enough removed from each other to provide adequate contrast in both tonality and color temperature despite the fact that orange is just brown. With our multi-toned base tones down, we'll apply the first of our first layers by mixing in a bit of moot green into the Warp Lightning Contrast, our first base tone. Using the contrast color in this way really helps to ensure the inclusion of the brightening tone remains cohesive with our shade choice. Further, we'll stir and spread it in a loose gradient to utilize multiple intensities of tones from this first mixing. This way we can return to any color used in the process as we progress. With those first mixed layers on and completed, we'll move on to the first highlight layers that favor the moot green. In putting this color on, we're focusing on putting the brighter colors towards the upper portions of each panel, building up a subtle gradation between shadow and highlight which will give a sense of depth to our model. Now that the first highlights are on, we'll get to the final step here and do our first layer of straight moot green. This second layer of highlighting will be focused mostly on the upper portions and sharp edges of panels, adding a whole lot of depth with a bit of the whole less is more approach. We definitely want to show some of the previous work so as to boost the dimensionality of our paint job. Continuing with this ongoing trend of firsts, we're going to put on our first layers of orange highlights. Blending in some of this intense brown gerine and building a variety of tones in a wide gradient on our wet palette, will allow us to use the original orange speed paint as a unifying tone for our colors. This first layer of the effort here will start to build up what constitutes our mid-tone, and we'll be utilizing the original speed paint as shadow layers 1 and 2 applied in one fell swoop. Just like with our first go of layering up paint to build depth and shading, we're going to go at this once more with the orange tones, building up a lighter shade that's rooted in our original speed paint color choice. Again, by tying back our highlight layers into that original color, we unify the scheme and make the shading depth look really cohesive. 
Again, like our first run of the upper highlights with our pure brightest color, we're gonna hit the tippy tips of sharp panels and top edges of the orange panels. Using this here Fire Dragon Bright in a very conservative fashion will round out the layer depth and put us in a state of near completion. From this step, we're gonna take a moment to let these highlights dry before adding specular highlights. Our first tertiary tone is gonna be a simple metallic paint to hit a few choice bits and provide some shiny contrast to the matte colors of the primary shades. The color of choice today is gonna to be some Army Painter Gunmetal. Though most of the opaque paints from Army Painter are definitively mid, this one is great. The shininess and coverage are solidly on point. Since our first step of painting metallics was done with a simple solid coat, we can choose to use some liquid talent to build our depth and greasy metallic feel. By applying a bit of Citadel NULN oil shade to our metallic base tone, it'll do a ton of heavy lifting for us in an instant fashion. Though this method isn't as detailed, it still looks good enough on our metal accents. With our ink wash dried, we can move on to the final specular highlights on the matte primary colors. We'll take out our phalanx yellow and mix a bit of it into the top end of our wet palette gradients to provide one more layer of highlights. The beauty of working with brown green terrain is that the yellow highlight color works really well with both the orange and green. Since our brown is already a warm tone, this super bright yellow will provide a boost to that warmth as well as to push our green into a warmer tone, ensuring that the model has an all around warm feel to its warm palette. We'll take the first application of this straight yellow and apply it on the tippy tips of the tippy tips, making the paint job pop with a little bit of step five magic. Now we're gonna move on to the final and tertiary color on this model in the form of Calidor Sky. But first we need to also put out a little bit of my favorite Liquitex white acrylic ink and mix them up into a similar gradient on our wet palette. Just like the other colors, it's the same formula of applying a base tone, building up the layers and applying highlights. The biggest difference between this and the previous layers is that we're gonna work up our individual highlight layers in the reverse direction from our previous efforts in a very specific pattern. After first applying the base of Calidor Sky, we'll build up brighter and brighter tones, always moving towards a highlight in the lower right corner. This effort will culminate in an icy blue tone in the very bottom right of our lenses to evoke the idea of refracted light moving through the jewel. Finally, we wanna cap off the work on these jeweled bits with a very neat and small dot of the brightest pure white in the top left corner, directly catty corner to the crescent at the bottom. With all the real painting done on our little battle buddy, we want to step into the first step of preparing the base. This here Sterling Technical Paint by Citadel provides a nice and in-scale texture to the base, but takes some serious time to properly cure. So we're going to glob it on with a toothpick before doing our last little detaily bits on Moriarty himself while it dries. Next up, we want to hit this model with my favorite hobby hack. First, we'll put out some Vallejo Black Brown and Hull Red in an even 50-50 mix, not worrying about any kind of thinning. Once we've got it blended thoroughly, we can snag a little piece of rough foam and tuck into some proper edge chipping. Just get your roughed up bit of model case or blister packing foam and tear up the edges so we don't have any regular shapes, then dippy do it into the unthinned paint and remove the vast majority on a paper towel, much like the way you want to prep a dry brush. Once prepped, we're just gonna boldly jab the sponge all over the model from various angles, building up the effect a little bit at a time until we've achieved a really satisfying chip job all over its surface, going back in afterwards with some gunmetal to add some shine to the bigger chips. Speaking of dry brushing, now we wanna develop the earth effect on Little Morty's base with a warm and muddy clay-like tone in the form of this here scrag brown. Calling into question once more whether or not orange is just brown, this color really rides that line of confusion and I like that a whole lot. We'll first dip a soft makeup brush and then remove the vast majority of the color on a paper towel before gently stroking the surface until the desired effect is reached. A light touch is best so we don't make a big old mess. Now it's time to slide back out our little sticky buddy. We'll slather her with some viscous white goop in the form of some Elmer's Glue All PVA glue. With the puddle of goo ready to go, we can use a toothpick to dab it here and there on our now dry ground texture. First, we'll sprinkle a thorough coating of some Gale Force 9 basing grit, which we'll color with some Army Painter Gravelord Gray speed paint. That'll go a long way towards both tinting the unpainted grit and blending it into the surrounding earth with the spillover. 
While that dries, we'll use our still wet guest palette to scoop up some adhesive and apply little bits of coarse flocking here and there until the base looks just right. Rounding out our model and then finally finishing it off with a solid rim job in Golden Fluid Acrylics black paint. Catch me sometime soon for some more 10 minute meetings.